Well, welcome to Tai Chi, the second session in our series of um, Let's Get Physical and Mental for a Year of Wellness. My name is Allison Barton, and I'm the sponsor of this activity, and I'd like to introduce you to Chester Lynn, who is a local community Tai Chi instructor and Moore Park College alum. So we're really mm -hmm. happy to have him here today. Um, he's going to give us a brief description and, um, of Tai Chi. And then we're going to get started in about five-ish five, five -ish minutes. And then we'll have time for questions and answers later. So that might be a kind of a fun thing for all of us to, uh, to experience as well. So without any further ado, I give you Chester Lin. Hey, hi, everyone. Welcome. I'm glad you're all here for the Tai Chi workshop. So I'm going to give a basic introduction to the history of Tai Chi, which is actually really interesting. Afterwards, we'll do some warm-up, some qigong, and some Tai Chi. And if we still have time, we can do some partner exercises, okay? So let's do a little bit of warm-up, and I'll talk while we do this, okay? So this is called arm shaking. To loosen up your shoulders, you raise your arm to about shoulder height, you just let it drop. Drop, limp. Okay, so let's do this for a little bit. And so Tai Chi, today we know it as a healthy exercise to improve our fitness, but in the very beginning, it was a combative martial art. And it all started in the village in China, in Hebei, called the Chen Village. And there, in the village, many of the men practiced Chen, tai chi, Chen style Tai Chi Chen, and they were known as exceptional bodyguards and caravan guards, kind of like what we have as uh, armored truck drivers these days. And so that was the, the dominant profession of the region, of the village. And they would not teach outsiders, because this was their bread and butter, how they, how they made money and brought, put food on the table. And then one day, this all changed, because it was all just their family secret for a long time. But one day there was a, they had a servant, or like an indentured servant, really, somewhere between that and a slave, really, <laughs> named um, Yang Lutan. And he was watching the family practice in secret. He was like, oh, this looks fun. That looks cool. I want to do this. And then so in secret, he would observe the family practice at Tai Chi. And at night when no one's watching, he'd get up, sneak outside, and practice it. And one day he got caught. They're like, hey, what are you doing? And then so he was, uh, he was exposed. But the... But the teacher said, well, let's see what you've been doing then. Let's show, show me what you've been practicing. So he did it, and he was great at it. And if you're a teacher, you understand there's that, that you know, you can't let that talent go. When you see someone who loves something, that is good at it, that is learning it well, that you want to nurture it. So they broke the rules, and they taught him. They taught him the Chen Fiang Tai Chi. And then after some time, his uh, servanthood was up, and he left, he left town. So he went to Beijing and totally revealed the secret. <laughs> He went, he went to Beijing, stood outside the gates, and put up basically what we call a lei tai, but it's basically a boxing ring without the ropes. And he said, I'll fight anybody who wants to fight for two weeks, two weeks only. And then so, and you know, there's a lot of foot traffic through the main road that goes in and out of the, the capital city of China. So all these people fought him, and he beat everybody. And so the rumor spread about what he's been doing into the, into the palace. And the palace says, who is this? Name, a man named uh, Mr. Yang, who's beating everyone up. They call, and then someone's like, oh, they call him Yang the Unbeatable. It's like, well, why don't we bring him to the palace and see what he can do? So they invited him to the palace, and then they're like, wow, you are great. We would like you to teach uh, the Tai Chi to our palace guards and also to our royal family. So the, the aristocracy started practicing it. And people are similar now as they were back then, which is what the, what the rich and powerful do is pretty cool to everyone else. So everyone else wanted to learn Tai Chi. So it started spread in Beijing, and he taught, he passed out, down, or his children passed down a version that was a little less, a little less aggressive, a little less intense. He stripped out, um, he made it more, less common, the fighting aspects of it. And that's the version of Tai Chi that we often see today, and that's called the Yang Family, Yang Style Tai Chi Chen. And so that's the one we'll be doing today, because this is the easiest and it's the most gentle on our knees and our legs. Our second warm-up, we're going to spin from side to side like this. After, after Mr. Young brought Tai Chi to the world, it spread and spread, and there's, now there's quite a few styles. After the Chen method, there's a Yang family method, there's a Wu family method, the Zhao Bao family method, and so forth. And they each have their own characteristic, just like a like Louisiana barbecue versus Texas barbecue and so forth. <laughs> it's all the same animal, but they all have their own taste. Okay, 
So I have a warm-up routine I like to have everyone do. It's, we start from the top, from our head, our neck, working down to our feet, okay? So follow along. When you stand, let, keep, let your knees relax. So don't lock it like this. Let it bend just a bit, okay? So we start with our necks. Just look up and down. 10 times. And then we're going to go left and right 10 times. Next is our shoulder blades. You're going to take your hands and hug your shoulder blade, or as far as you can go. Roll your shoulder forward 10 times. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then backwards ten times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then our shoulder itself. So you take put one foot forward, your left foot forward. Take your right hand and spin it in a big circle. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very loose. Yeah, let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then backwards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, put the other foot forward. When you spin your arm, you want to get it as high as your shoulder allows, you know. Starting out, it might not be as loose, but it will get better over time. So to keep it vertical, you want to try and graze your leg as it comes up, graze your ear as it comes, goes back, like that, okay? So let's go backwards 10 times. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then forward 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. There's a high difficulty version for this. The next, if you, once you get used to that, you want to bring one hand going forward, one hand going back. So it looks like this. Okay, give it a go. You might have to start a little bit slower until you figure out. I find that most of my students take about two, three weeks to to get this one down. <laughs> it's sort of like this thing. Yeah. Yeah. But it's very important because, um, you know, if, especially back when they fought using Tai Chi, a lot of times you have one hand go forward, one hand goes back. Our hands move opposite each other as opposed to like this. So you, we have these one forward, one back motions. Okay? Try the other combination, other side. Yeah, you got it. Good job. <laughs> You can practice it slow, like you start here, one hand goes forward, one hand goes back. And they meet, and then they switch. The other hand goes forward, one hand goes back. Okay, so play around with it, you'll get it sooner or later. <laughs> it's not impossible, even if it seems really silly at first. Okay. Our next one is for our upper back. So put your hands out, you move, put your feet a little bit wider, and turn your hand up as you arch back. Pump. Yep, and then palm turn the other way as you bend forward. Okay, up, down, up, down, up, and down. and come back. The next one is we already did, it was this one, that's for our shoulders, and then for our waist was this one, which we've also already done. So next is our hips. So put your hand on your hip and just move in a circle. Three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. In the other direction, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Next one is our for our lumbar, for our low back. Reach up, reach down to your ankles and hold for a second. Then up and down. Okay, once more. And down. And up. And then we do the low back with a twist. So what you're gonna do is take your right hand, reach for your left ankle, and look over your left shoulder. Then with your other hand, you can massage your back, tap your Come back. Other side. So reach to your opposite feet. Good. Okay. Come back. That one is to nourish the energy of your kidneys, which is the organ that provides the chi, the life force that takes it, protects your back. And so that's a good one to do. Okay. Next one's our knees. So bend your knee a little bit and rotate them. Other direction. The next one, you're gonna hold your knees together and sit as far as you can. Yeah, just stay here. Come back. Once more. Comes back. Okay, and lastly, our ankles. So turn it 10 times one way. Ten times the other way. Ten times one way. Ten times the other way. And that's our warm up. Any questions? So next we're gonna do qigong. Anyone ever heard of that before? A few people. So qigong are the exercises from in China to tone what we call qi, which is the life force of your body. And so these are developed in the very, very early days by Taoists and Buddhist monks and priests. And they became popular for health, longevity, and making your body stronger for just either health purposes or combat purposes. So this one we're doing is called the ba duan jing, or the eight silk brocades, or eight pieces of valuable silk. There's eight movements. Each one nourishes a different part of our body, one of the five main organs. And I'll talk about each as we do them, okay? So when we do these, it's the same thing. Your feet is about shoulder width. Your knee is relaxed and a little bit bent. Your body weighs toward the middle front of your foot, just behind the ball of your foot, okay? So don't stand on your heel because that turns off all your ankle muscles. You want to put a little bit in the middle front. And then when you breathe, breathe naturally through your nose if possible. Breathe with your mouth if you need a little bit more air. And if I'm counting slower than you like, take, more, take as much breath. Nobody should pass out today. And then your tongue touches lightly the roof of your mouth. Reason for that is the energy meridian, the main ones in our body, one goes along the front of our body, one along the back of our body. And from here, to connect from the top of your mouth, the bottom of your mouth, it passes through your tongue. So that forms the last bridge that's not there all the time, okay? So follow along, okay? Breathe in, raise your arms slowly to your shoulder height, breathe out. This is a preparatory movement that we do between each one. Breathe in, breathe out. Okay, first movement. Breathe in as you raise your arm out to the side. Breathe out as you interlace your finger and press down. Breathe in as you raise your arm up to your heart. Breathe out as you press down. 
Breathe in, raise your arm up to your forehead. Breathe out as you push upwards to the ceiling. Breathe in, pull back to your forehead. Breathe out, push up to the ceiling. Breathe in as your arm opens. Breathe out as your arm lowers. Okay. Breathe in. Breathe out. Let's do that one again. Breathe in. Breathe out. Press down. Breathe in. Breathe out. 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 Okay. Next movement, we're going to step a little bit wider. Bring your arms together and circle. Breathe in. Breathe out as you reach down. Bend your knees into a squat. Breathe in as you scoop up. Arms cross. Breathe out as you push to your right with one hand and pull to your left with your other. If you flip the left and right, it's not a big deal. Breathe in as you open your arms. Breathe out as you lower your arms. Breathe in, bring your arms up. Breathe out the other direction. Notice my fingers are pointing up on the front hand. Okay. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Okay, let's do that one again. Step wide. Breathe in. This one works the energy of your lungs. Breathe out. Helps govern the emotion of sorrow. Helps your hair. Breathe out. And helps carpal tunnel. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Other direction. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. The next one works the energy of our spleen. Take one hand, breathe in as you raise it to your forehead. Breathe out as you push upwards, fingers pointing in, and the other hand pushes downwards. Yeah, twist your hands in. Good. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Other hand, breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Okay. Other hand again. Breathe in. Breathe out. 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 So that movement works the energy, the chi of your spleen. Spleen governs the emotion of anxiety, which is a big, big thing in modern life. So this one is a popular one amongst my students. So they always like practicing this one. And it's also good for if you have a little bit of issue with sleeping. You can't fall asleep at night. It's a good one to loosen you up. And because of twisting, it does on the, for the muscles and nerves. It's good for a carpal tunnel for anyone who types a lot. Okay. So that's a popular one. Next one, breathe in, breathe out. This one works the energy of our kidneys, which governs fear and bones. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, look over your shoulder as you turn, and then look down at your shoes, at your heel. Breathe out and come back. Okay, good. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Opposite shoulder. Breathe in. Look over your shoulder. Look down. Breathe out. Come back. Breathe in. Breathe out. Again. Breathe in. Breathe out. Other shoulder. Breathe in. Breathe out, come back. Breathe in. Breathe out. When you turn, it's a little easier, a little more comfortable if you elongate as you turn. So instead of just turning like this, if you kind of stretch up and over, like a 
high jumper going over the pole, okay? So let's try that. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Look down. And come back. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. The next one is for our heart. Step wide. Breathe in. Breathe out. Squat a bit. Okay, so you're going to keep your head facing forward. You'll turn your shoulder and your body to one side. Yeah, breathe in as you do so. Breathe out as you come back. Breathe in as you go the other way. Breathe out, come back. Keep looking forward with your face, so keep facing me. Breathe in, just your body turns. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Okay, two more times. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Okay, come back. Breathe in. Breathe out. Next one's kidney again. Breathe in. Breathe out. Pretty much just like in the warm up. Hold on to your ankles and take a breath in and out. Let your back relax. And come up. Breathe in. Reach towards the ceiling. And arms down. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Next movement governs liver and anger. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Yep. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Pull your other hand back. Yeah, good. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Now both hands punch to the ceiling. Breathe out. Okay, and up. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Okay, next is the last one. This one works your spinal cord and your brain. So put your feet together. You want to keep your ankle together the whole time. Breathe in as you press down on the imaginary arm rail, hand rail, as you raise your heel. Breathe out as you come down halfway, and then drop. Okay, two, we're going to seven times. Breathe in, breathe out, drop. Three, breathe in, breathe out, drop. Four, breathe in, breathe out, drop. Yeah, that's a good idea. Five, breathe in. Breathe out, drop. Six, breathe in, breathe out, drop. And seven, breathe in, breathe out, drop. Okay, and we are finished with our Qigong. Okay, any questions, anybody? Okay, no, so this is, this is a good one to do once or twice a day. It only takes really about three minutes, five minutes to do, go through all of them. And you can also just spot pick your favorite ones and you can repeat it just once or as many times as you'd like. So once again, don't be too fixated on the number or the sequence. As long as you do it, it's better than not doing it. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to do what we commonly know as being Tai Chi, which is the routine of series of Tai Chi movements. And that I think the aspect of Tai Chi that people both associate with it is that it's very slow. <laughs> and that is how it should be practiced, very slow. Because Tai Chi is a moving meditation, we say. And whereas in meditation, you may be practicing your mindfulness and awareness of your breathing or your thoughts that arise and goes away and so forth. In Tai Chi, we're practicing the awareness of your movement. So when you make it slow and maintain that awareness of how you move, you improve the, your, how much you're present in the moment and it relaxes your mind and your body. So we're going to just go through it a few times to memorize it. And then we're going to do it really slow, okay? So for this, let's all face a mirror so we're all doing the same direction. Okay. And if you're on the very that side, maybe come this way a tad. 
because we're going to be moving in that general direction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Tai Chi ready is the same as what we've been doing with a breathe in and breathe out. We're going to do a movement called while horse parts is mains. The first part has right hand rising, left hand underneath, like you're holding one of those balance balls, like that. Okay. Take your left foot and place it out in front of you. Slowly shift your weight, and your left hand goes forward and up, right hand goes back. When you do this, your, your fingers, your toes, your nose, all point in the same direction. This is called the three points as one. Okay? And your right hand, here, I'll come around for a moment. Right hand presses down lightly, like this. Yeah, this is about as high as your nose. That's good. 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 Yeah, everyone's doing very nicely. Let's come back and do it again. Tai Chi ready? Okay, one, two, okay, good. We're going to move on to the next part. For the next part, you step your feet together, left hand turns over, right hand comes under. Yeah, so it's just a mirror what we did. Yes, left hand on top, right hand below. You guys are doing really well. Step your right foot forward and extend your hands out. Good. Step forward again. Step together. Left hand comes underneath. Right hand stays over. Left foot step out. Left hand extend. Okay, good. Step together. Right foot step out. Go. Okay, very nice. Okay, come back to the beginning. No trouble so far, right? So let's practice it slow. So how slow is slow? I use a four Mississippi rule or four alligator rule. So what that means is from here, you gotta count four Mississippis like this. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, and so forth. Okay, so we're going to do that all together. Okay, Tai Chi ready? And down. Okay, so turn where you're facing diagonally now. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi. Okay, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi. One more time. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi. Okay, good job. You guys have really good balance. <laughs> I think some of you don't need this class. <laughs> okay, so let me give you some pointers on the Tai Chi movements. Now you know how fast we practice it. Three important things. One is that your shoulder must be relaxed. You can't have a shoulder like this. It's gotta drop. Second, your elbow has to be relaxed. So you can't be like, like that, it's gotta be relaxed. Third is your hip has to be relaxed. So it's got to sink down, sit. The sitting feeling is like you're sitting onto maybe um, a stool. Like you're kind of sitting like this. Yeah, that's, that looked perfect, just about like that. And it makes a tremendous difference in your balance. Uh, let me borrow you for a moment. Yeah, audience participation time. Steps come here. So if you face me and put your hands up like this, put one foot forward, like you're pushing a, a car that's not moving anymore, uh. right? So here, this is pretty solid. So you could take my pressure, it's just fine. If you raise your shoulder, it's very not solid. Right away, she'll go overboard. Okay, drop your shoulder again. See, that's good now. If you let your shoulder come up like this, once again, no good. Drop your shoulder. See, much more steady. Next, for your butt, if you stick it out like that, right? <laughs> not steady. <laughs> if you sit onto your imaginary bar stool, see, this is very solid. So this is 
how we keep our body in the good alignment and good balance. And so that's what you have to keep in mind with every movement, not just with what you do here, but when you do anything. If you push your car and you push it like this, you're probably gonna throw something out or another. So, or if you're trying to move your dining table, whatever, drag your couch around, good body alignment. Relax your shoulder, relax your hip, relax your elbows. Okay, and it'll help you with everything. Okay, so let's practice again, nice and slow. Tai Chi ready? Okay, one. Step together. Two, step out. Okay. So about your awareness, when we start the next movement, the awareness goes into your right hand as it bring, comes around your body and it brings your feet in with it. And now here, sit into that on the bar stool. Very nice and step out. Your right hand is the center of your awareness as it goes out. And your gaze follows your hand. Now your left hand comes in. Left foot step forward, left hand goes out. Right hand comes in. Right foot goes out. Left hand comes in. Left hand goes out. And rest. Okay, good job. So I'll give a little um, fun, fun history. So like I was saying, Tai Chi was originally a combative martial art. So all these movements initially, originally, was for self-defense or yeah, defending your caravan from um, bandits. So I'll, I'll give a quick illustration of the movements. Tian, can I have your assistance for a moment? Yes, that would be you. <laughs> yep, you look nice and sturdy, so. So this one, which we just did, this one, has a lot of different combat uses. So if he threw a right punch at me, his right hand comes. This first part where we're holding the therapy ball, he had right hand, your defense, and this hand sets up after that. And then when you step through, you step behind, you hit with your shoulder, you hit with your elbow, hand comes over and you push him off balance over your leg. That's one of the uses. Another one, the punch comes like this here, the hand comes under the elbow and dislocates it, like that. And there's other kinds here, come again. So here, this, this one hits, he, he kind of flinches away, he avoids it. When you come here like this, you reach for his leg. And we lift up, lift up his leg, bring it up over his head, and bump him with the shoulder, and down they go. So this is some of the uses in bare hands. And this whole movement, if you can imagine, we don't have the right tool for this, that when they, if they had like a spear or a pole arm, you hold this thing and you sweep, and do a big cut with it. So, so whether you are unarmed or you had a weapon, these movements had combat reasons. We've got a sword, his, imagine we had a sword. This sword comes, you deflect this sword and go whoosh, cut like that. So it's, it's quite interesting for, I mean, we don't really need this sort of technique much for these days. Pepper spray will serve a whole lot better for <laughs> almost any situation. <laughs> but it's good to know culturally where things came from and why it's this way. And that's actually why Tai Chi is so good for our health because it originally had a survival of the fittest purpose, which is these moves made you really fast, really strong, really well balanced. So the, so the bodyguards survived and this method was passed on. Some other versions that didn't work as good, didn't make you as strong, it made you awkward and clumsy. Those people didn't make it professionally <laughs> and they didn't become famous teachers of famous bodyguards and famous students. So that's how it happens. Thank you very much. Okay, next we're gonna do the second movement. So we stop about here, we'll just continue from there. This one's called the brush knee twist step. So you're gonna shift your weight back. Your left hand brushes by your face, goes down by your knee. That's the brush knee part of this. And your right hand comes up behind you to your ear and pushes forward. Yeah, like that. So your shoulder is a little bit up. Relax your shoulder, there you go. Okay, let's try that again from here. Left hand brush, right hand comes up, push. Mm -hmm. And at the end of this, your left hand is about as far forward as your knee and to the side, like you're on a, there's a handrail or so, of sorts. So for years, maybe like this. And yeah, give me one moment. 
So here, the shoulder can relax a little bit. There you go. <laughs> yeah, see, if you're back where you were like this, here, watch, see? Oops. Now, if you relax this a little bit, see? Only Total difference. Yeah. yeah. Relax the shoulder. <laughs> From here, let's do a second one. So turn your left foot out 45 degrees or so, step together. Right hand does the opposite where you sweep by your face and down by your knee. Your left hand comes up behind your ear and push forward as you take the right step. Right step, other right, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Turn your right foot 45 degrees, step together. Left hand brush, right hand comes up. Push. Yeah. Turn. Step together. Brush. Left hand. Push. Right hand. foot step. Yeah. So for this movement, we have the opposite hand and feet forward. Okay. Okay. Good. Back to the start. So in the first movement, the wild horse parts mains, we have the same hand and feet in front. In this one, the brush knee twist that we have the opposite hand and feet in front. So keep that in mind and you should be on the right track, okay? So let's start from here again. So brush. Push. Okay, turn your feet a bit, step together. Brush. And push. Good, okay, turn, brush. Push. Yeah, step together. Brush. Push. Okay. So one. You know, you could you, you do go a little zigzag or you go straight forward. It's not a big deal. Yeah. When there's a big group, I go a little more straight, but usually there's a bit of zigzagging. And then the wrist, you don't want to have it too stiff like this. It's actually like kind of a relaxed forward lean kind of thing. Okay, good. Just a little more out. Okay. Yeah, very good. Okay, back to the start. So I see that some people sometimes get mixed up as to which hand brush, which hand pushes. So at the end of a movement, the hand that's in front is the one that brushes, and the other hand push. And you step together, and the same hand that's in front brushes, and the other hand push. The, you put your attention on the hand that's brushing, and then the hand that's pushing. But they move at the same time. So as this left hand's brushing, my right hand's going back and sets up. And then the right hand takes over the, as, a, as a start of the moment and pushes forward. Yeah, okay. So let's try that four Mississippi way, okay? From here. Actually, there's like a six Mississippi way. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, okay? One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi. One more, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, and rest. Okay, nice job. You see everyone's balance is getting better and better. When you practice slow, it really shows the imperfection in your movements. If you're fast, you, get, you know, it's kind of sloppy, you didn't notice when you were off balance, you don't notice when something was kind of um, uncomfortable or twisted in a funny angle. But when you do it slow, you'll really feel it, which is why it's valuable to practice it slow. One of my teachers, we used to do, say that you gotta do this until you can do it smoothly over a span of three minutes. I never was able to do that. <laughs> Can't stay on one leg that long, but that's what he said anyhow. <laughs> and so what, next we're gonna do a movement called cloud hands and this hand in this one, we stand facing the mirror. One hand waves outwards. And when it comes back in the circle, the left hand goes outwards. Come back. Like this. 
this is a hand portion. It's pretty much pretty much what Mr. Miyagi calls wax on, wax off. Okay, so let me show you some of the new ones. So from this right hand, when it comes here, it's palm up, like you're carrying some uh, carrying something, and the pinky drills upwards. And then it goes up right along the middle of your chest and it goes out. And then your thumb presses outwards and down. And the pinky comes back. Pinky, pinky, pinky. Thumb, 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 thumb. Pinky, pinky, pinky. Thumb, 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 thumb. So now let's add the other hand. So from here, and so you see my weight shifts as the hand goes out. We're gonna add walking to this in a moment once we get used to the pattern. So right now my right hand is the center of attention. Left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand. So let's do one way, move that way for once, okay? So let's, let's go left hand from here, from left, feet together, step right, right hand, step together, left hand, step right, right hand, step together, left hand, Step right, right hand. Together, left hand. One more, and right hand. Okay, we could do this going the other way too. So from, let's start from feet together. Okay, step left, left hand. Step right, right hand. Step left, left hand. Right foot, right hand. Left foot, left hand. Right foot. Right hand, left foot, left hand, right foot, right hand. Okay, and let's stop here. Okay. Any questions about that one? So that one gives us our, our sideways stepping motion, the, the two arms circling together. Now, I have a way to link the three movements we did all together. So then you can practice them in a row. And then the number of repetitions depends on how much space we have. Okay, so let's just follow. It'll be pretty easy, I think. Yeah, move a little bit that way, gives us more space. Okay, good. Tai Chi ready? Okay, one. Step left foot. Two. Step together. One. Step out, two. Step together, one. Step out, two. Step together, one. Step out, two. Step together, one, and two. Okay, from here, brush knee, one, two. Right hand push, left foot in the front. Good, step together. One, two. One, two. One, two. Right foot, right foot. Okay, one more. One, two. Okay, then we do the cloud hands. So right hand, then step together, left hand. Step right, right hand. Together, left hand. Right hand. Left hand. Right hand. Left hand. Right hand. Left hand. Right hand, 
left hand, right hand, left hand, right, left. Okay, and we're about back to where we started. Tai Chi finish. And rest. Okay, nice job everybody. So that's a good introduction form with a little bit of each kind of movement. We got forward with the same side, forward with opposite side, and a sideway one. If I think you guys are doing really well, and I would like to add another one where we move backwards. Okay? And this one has a fun story to it. The, the movement looks like this. So from where we are here, one hand swings backwards, and, and then you step back. Like that. This movement is called Repel the Monkey in the Yang style Tai Chi. As, and they say it's because there's a monkey on your back and you're gonna get it off your back, okay? That's one, this is one of those funny things in Chinese martial arts, which is China has a lot of different language dialects. Different parts of China speaks not quite the same language. It's, not, it's like Italian to Spanish um, to French. It's like sort of similar, but really not, no. And, then, and a lot of the martial artists and bodyguards and people who practice this stuff or living were not college educated or high school educated probably not elementary school educated, so their linguistic skills is so-so. And so if you cross a, di across a region, and it doesn't fully translate, a lot of things get lost in translation. The Chen Tai Chi family originally called this movement reverse curling of arms, which makes perfect sense. You're, you're going backwards and you're curling your arms. And so that's Dao uh, Zhen Hong. And then that went from one region to another, and it became Dao Hui Hou, which sounds pretty close, and they made up a story to make that make sense, but it's not really what it was originally meant. So a lot of things get lost in translation, and it's kind of fun. So this one, let's do from here. We'll go from one of our plow hands, okay? So here, so right hand reaches back, mm -hmm. and it comes back around to your ear, and presses forward as you step back. Very good. And your left hand stays in front, of, in front of your belly button. Left hand goes back by your ear and push. Yeah, right at shoulder height. Reach back, step back, push. Reach back, step back, and push. One more time. Reach back, step back. Push. Okay, we'll stop here because you guys ran out of space. <laughs> okay, let's move this way a little bit. Okay, so this one, the tricky part is when you turn and stuff. So watch for a moment. Your hand goes back, all the way back. And as your hand goes back, your foot gets dragged behind. So there it's set up. And then when you push, your body turns and you complete the motion. Okay, let's try that. Reach back. Push. Very nice. Good job, everyone. Reach back and push. Reach back, push. Reach back and push. Okay, good. Okay, take a little quick break. So this one is actually pretty neat for um, uh, combat purposes. There's a lot of, this one is quite surprising. Ooh, let me borrow you for a second for this. So sometimes they say it's like this. It, his punch comes, and you, you defend, and you kick with your front foot because your foot's light. Or they are, his punch comes, you come here, and when this comes around, you twist his elbow or something. But really, the, the most useful version of this is when you, someone grabs you from behind. So you, when you do this, you hit. You hit, OK? And by then, he softened up a bit. He's a little bit regretful about holding on, OK? Mm -hmm. And after that, when you go behind, you grab his shoulder, and you, flip, you toss him over you. So you are getting a monkey off your back, so to speak. So it's not completely ludicrous that they thought that that's what the name was. So that's the one. Yeah, thank you. Like that. And over. So you can get out a shot the next time you get uh, mugs in the alley. You can elbow them, slap them, and pull them around you. <laughs> okay. And then we didn't go over what the other two was. Let me, let me have your assistance again. The brush knee twist step is pretty simple. That his punch comes, you brush, you defend. You come here, you push, okay? If you're really close distance, his punch comes, you brush, and then you wrap his elbow, you step, 
off balance they go. And then with this hand, you assist them onto the floor. And also, let's see, the cloud hands. The cloud hands were, were these things, okay? So commonly, your punch comes, you just do the Mr. Miyagi, wax on, wax off, and just wax everything off, right? But you could do this. Here's the punch. One, the next one, two, like that. Right, right from under. Knock them off balance, hit them with your elbow. And also, like this, come again, like this. And then the other one comes. So these had really interesting background. And then, so if you have more questions about those, you can ask me after class or ask me later, and I'll be happy to show you kind of how these go, OK? So now we did the repel monkey. Let's put all four moves in sequence. We'll do it as a big group routine. Yeah, let's start this way a little bit. So from the very beginning, Tai Chi ready? Wild horse parts main. One, two, yeah, right hand forward, right foot forward, three, four, um, right hand underneath for this, right hand low, left hand high, yeah, and go ahead, step forward, let's do one more, five, Then left hand comes back, brush knee, push. Two, brush, left hand push. Three, left hand brush, right hand push. Four, left hand brush, right hand brush, left hand push. Okay, one more, five. Okay, then claw hands, right hand waves over, good. Step together, left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand. From here, okay, left hand up, let's stay here for a second. We're gonna go do the repel monkey. So right hand goes back, push. Left hand, push. Good, right hand, push. Left hand, push. Two more, right hand, push. Left hand, push. And we are back to where we started. Tai Chi finish, and rest. Okay, good job, give yourself a hand. So I want to show you guys a little bit of partner activity because having a partner really helps you guide your movements to know whether you're doing it good or not as good, okay? So there's a lot of ways of practicing with a partner. In the old days when they were stingy about teaching Tai Chi, when this was their bread and butter, they would teach you the movements and withhold the partner training so that you would be practicing day and night and not know if you're doing it in the right track or not. So, and only the teachers, pet students, favorite students will get to know the right way of doing everything. But now we're going to make it, make everybody healthy and strong. So none of that secrecy stuff anymore. Okay. Um, ooh, let me borrow you. So a good one to start with is the clown hands. So in Tai Chi, your body has to be nicely outlined. If you're connected from your fingers to your toes to the earth. So if Wu faces the, this way and the clown hands like this, first we want to make sure that his lower body is all connected. So your partner leans on about where your belt is or your hip is like that and he's gonna step sideways towards me, like that. And if he does it well, I can't stop him. If he does it crappy, then he'll lose his balance. So you just simply lean on them a bit, like that, and then the opponent tries to walk. So this is nice and solid. So once you've gotten the hang of keeping your lower body stable, we gotta get your trunk stable too, so face them. Oof. So instead of pushing here, I'm gonna lean on U at the shoulder. And he does the exact same thing. He tilts a bit there. Yeah, like that. And then I keep leaning on him. I keep my arm locked so I don't bend it like this because that's too wiggly. It's easier for your partner if you keep it locked like this. And he just keeps coming like that. So we are walking sideways in preparation for doing a very nice claw hands with your power all connected. So now you've done connecting your lower body to the earth and your shoulder to your lower body to the earth. So we've got to get your arm to be part of the picture. So you're going to do this, Ooh, okay? 
So you know, I lean on his hand here, and he goes through the motion, and yep, and then through that, adding a step as you take step forward, oh, okay. like that. Good. So when you do it well, the, it's all connected. If he raises his shoulder a little bit or something, there's a bad posture, then it's going to be very. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so good. when everything's aligned and he sits a little bit, and mm -hmm. he could take that step, sure. bring his arm. Go ahead. Yeah, like that. Okay. Okay, so it looks like everyone's on the right track, which is fantastic. So you guys have learned a lot about the essence of what is Tai Chi, which is how to hold your body in good balance, in good alignment, and to move like that. And so that hopefully the next time you have to push your stalled car or move some furniture, you don't throw out your back. This is, this is how you want to move so that you're, you're stable and solid. It, we didn't do pulling, but pulling the same idea, where you connect your body and you pull them along like that. Your, your body and your hands all move together. Not like this, because you know what's going to happen next. So you sit, relax your shoulder, relax your elbow, and you pull, pull, push. Everything it can be done this way. So Tai Chi is not just like you practice Tai Chi, but it's a way of moving your body that you can apply to everything. <clears throat> Whether you're, when you're holding your toothbrush, if you hold your toothbrush and you're brushing your teeth like this, your shoulder and arm is going to burn in no time. And if you're cooking, you're like, um, flipping pancakes, right, and you're like this, it's not going to feel great. Um, so the same sort of concept, and even just when you're carrying something, whether you let your back relax and sit a bit, or you're like, like this, you'll feel the difference in everything you do. So it's something you can take with you and practice all the time. Um, my assistant, ooh, he knows that like, he, you know, before he was my assistant and, and hung out with me all day, he thought like I practiced like eight hours of Tai Chi a day, which is not true. I practice hardly Tai Chi a day, but with everything you do, you could be practicing Tai Chi. So that all the time, you're getting healthier, becoming more present, more mindful, move more natural, and move more balanced. Tai Chi comes from Taoism, where this is about the pursuit of the Tao, which is the way, which is the natural way of living. And here, specifically, we're talking about a natural way of moving. And they say to move like a baby again. So if you think about when a baby first gets up off the ground and they walk, they are kind of like that, because that's a natural, strong way of walking. We humans are special that we have intellect. We can learn to type, we can learn to write, we can learn to like uh, make sculpture, sculptures and all kinds of amazing things. But that means we have the unique ability to rewrite, to change how we move. As otherwise, you look, every doggy moves in the same doggy way. It might be big, small, short leg, long leg, but they all move like dogs. All cats move the, um, the same way. But you, me, and you, we all walk with different ways because we're human we can learn that. But that's not necessarily the way we were meant to move, the way we were designed to move optimally. So we fall off the trail, we're off the tail, and then, then you start to have a lot of wear and tear in your body. But if you can learn to move naturally again, like an animal, like a baby, then we'll move nice. And you look at kids, like three, five-year-olds at the playground, they all kind of run the same way. Six-year-olds kind of run the same way. Seven-year-olds, they run the same way. And then like, after that, they start to have their each unique characteristics. And we value uniqueness, but we also have to value what is the optimal, natural way of moving, which is what we're pursuing with every movement Tai Chi, how to get that, that correctness back and that natural, smooth, easiness. And that's how you can protect your body, live for 150 years, and have um, good joints throughout your life. So that's all what I want you to take away from this class. We have a little bit of time for questions and answers. So anybody? Where do you teach? I teach in Moore Park, right by the Wood Ranch Barbecue. You guys know where that is, on LA Avenue. Um, I have a physical therapy office, which is what I do most of the day. Wednesday, Friday mornings at 11, I have a class. And Tuesday, Thursday evenings at 7, I have a class. Well, thank you so very much for My being pleasure. here today. A nice round of applause for Chester. Thank you, everybody.